Hello TCB Minders, it's Adriana here. Welcome to my Suspicious Minds TCB channel where we talk about all things Elvis and Elvis related. So, today I'm just going to start off by saying that I did have a different plan for this first episode but I decided to scrap what I had because I was talking about the movie but everyone's been talking about the movie so I just felt like it wasn't something I wanted to do right now. So I've just decided to go back to what I originally wanted to do with this channel and talk about talk about things that haven't been talked about very much like Elvis's true personality, his hobbies, things that he loved to do. Talk about I want to talk about Gladys, Vernon, um, you know, the crew and the loved ones around him and their personalities and their dynamics between them all. Um, obviously Colonel as well and how he played role in that whole thing and I, I want to talk about some of those things and also some of the bring up some some discussions about um, some topics that are like left sort of not in limbo but that were kind of inconsistent or unresolved that are like what if hypotheticals things like you know situations like that um, and that's just my opinion you know um, but I want to talk about that and have a discussion with you guys about it so you know feel free to interact with with me on those subjects um, yeah so I want to talk today about Gladys first actually so um, because she was just such an integral part of Elvis's story and his life and and clearly obviously she's his mother but I mean in terms of the you know morally and ethically and the the way that he was raised and the attributes that he that he learned you know the qualities that he learned from her um, you know like his mannerisms and um, you know just being a really sweet natured boy um, you know um, being very humble being very polite um, things like that so and I mean all a lot of those qualities and attributes were were actually <laughs> were actually you know due to um, Gladys's way of nurturing him um, so you know because obviously there was a, a lot of times where it was just Elvis and, and Gladys. To begin with, obviously, if you don't know already, Gladys was born Gladys Love Smith, um, and she was born April 25th, 1912, in Missouri, and she was one of nine siblings, and her parents were Robert and Octavia Dole Smith. Now, little known fact, most people don't like to really touch on this because it is quite a bit taboo, and may have looked a certain way to people but um but Gladys's parents Robert and Dole Smith were actually first cousins so um yeah I mean obviously back then that that kind of stuff happened I mean it wasn't great but it happened um you know like people did used to do that it's just one of those things but um but I mean they were both hardworking, strong, loving people, um, and um, yeah, she was raised on a cotton farm. Like her parent, her father was a cotton farmer, and um, so that's where that's she. She was very humble upbringing, um, and yeah. So I mean, she so she met Vernon in church when he was 17 and she was 19 so he was underage but they falsified their age to go get married <laughs> to be able to get married which back then you were able to do so it is what it is you know i guess in that sense they got married and the in june 17th i think it was 19 
1933. So, um, yeah, so they got married then. And then, um, then obviously in 35, um, they were pregnant. January 8th, 1935, obviously is when Jesse Garin and Alvis Aaron Presley were born. Um, now, at the time, because back then they were not able to un like, realize that they were having more than one, um, it was a surprise to them, and Jesse Garin was stillborn. But apparently, when Alvis was about to be born, um, there, Vernon had actually said there was quite a number of strange occurrences that day while around sur surrounding the birth. Um, and, and Gladys had gone through a quite a hard, la difficult labour. I think it was Vernon had said there was a jar or bottle on the on the top shelf in the room that they were in. And apparently, the minute he was born, he this jar, this bottle, just self combusted, literally just self combusted, exploded, and no one could explain it. It was bizarre, like. What, how, how does that happen? You know, that's such a strange occurrence, such a weird thing. Gladys had actually said at one stage, you know, when one twin died, the other got the strength of both, right? And I totally get that, I believe that. But also another fact was that that same year in 1935, Gladys's mother, Octavia Dole Smith, had actually passed away um, as well, and she she had tuberculosis actually. Um, I I honestly think that even though he had gained the strength of his pup deceased twin, I also think that the spirit of his grandmother was also with him, and that's why I believe. With the with the bottle or oh, the the jar on the top shelf, that that occurrence, and just knowing Albus's energy and his presence, I do believe from birth, from the get go, even Vernon said he knew they knew, both of them, Gladys and Vernon, knew that something was special with this with their boy, and just when you hear those stories. I, I remember the first time I heard it, I just got chills. I got goosebumps. Like, I was like, wow, that's amazing. Like, that just shows me. I just feel like that just sets the tone for Alice's life, that he was just an extraordinary person. He was just very gifted and blessed. And and I think that every... Like, I just feel like he was very spiritual from the beginning. And I do think a lot of that is to do with with also Gladys's descendants, her her ancestors, because I mean her great great grandmother was Morning Dove White, who was a full Cherokee native, and I mean if you've ever seen pictures of her, she's a beautiful woman, um, and you know, and that just to me, like obviously, uh, you know, the natives are very in touch with the land; they're indigenous, you know, um, and that was. So I just feel like he had that connection, just like that other realm almost, you know. I think that's why part of his his charisma or like his essence was just so much, so larger than life because he had all these little things around him, like, like I said, like the energy and the... The guide, like whether it's the guides around him giving him, uh, you know, like basically a superpower, you know, um, uh, just helping him along. I don't know what it was, but it was just something really extraordinary. So, anyway, that's just what I believe with with her side as well. Like, you know, that lineage is really, really connected, and um, and I mean. I, I do believe there's something special in that. Um, but that sort of plays into his later life as well. Him being such a spiritual person and wanting to search for the answers and seek seek the, 
the, his purpose and his meaning. Going back to Gladys, so when Elvis started getting a bit bigger, you know, I like the fact that Gladys sort of gave him an ultimatum, like, you, you know, because Elvis wanted a gun for one of his birthdays and whether it's, you know, pretend or not, um, she was just not going to let him have one. Um, so, you know, obviously he wanted to pretend he was a cowboy. Um, obviously I think they were saying like it was like the option was a bike or a guitar. And I think the funny, the funny story that I, I heard was really so cute is like Elvis had actually got given a bike at one stage from Gladys and Vernon. But after taking it to school, he'd actually come home and he didn't have his bike. And they were like, where's your bike? And he was like, well, oh, the kid at school wanted one and he doesn't, ha he doesn't have one. And so I felt bad and I gave it to him and I was like, oh. <laughs> so it was, such, it was cute to hear that, but they were obviously, they would have been thinking, oh, okay, well, you know, get your bike back. Um, and you know, so then he obviously got the bike back and then, I don't know however long later, but he apparently did it again and he gave the kid his bike. And I think at that point, Vernon and Gladys just realized like, okay, we can't stop this. He's gonna try and keep giving this kid his bike. But I thought that was just, uh, just shows he really was such, even as a young boy, he was so giving and loving and he just wanted to, to give, you know? Um, and that's so sweet, you know. Um, so, yeah, so I was like, obviously he got the guitar and then him being very studious and inquisitive, um, you know, curious boy, he wanted to learn more about it. So he obviously started learning the guitar and then that obviously led him to, you know, singing in the fair and then singing at high school and things like that, um, which he actually was flunking. Uh, his music class in high school, believe it or not, but um, then he started singing one day and in class randomly and they loved him and then from there he was just popular and everyone loved him and yeah, which would have been fantastic for him at the time because he probably was just this loner, nerdy, weird kid that like had weird shirts and weird hair at that time and the people making fun of him obviously and things like that which kids can be mean for the stupidest reasons, you know, but, um, yeah, so obviously that, that sort of boosted his confidence and, um, yeah, obviously the rest is history in that regard, but getting back to Gladys, so that was a cute story that, you know, she was the one that obviously gave him that ultimatum to try to, you know, make him choose the more, something that was better for him. Like, you, you see where her... Her nurture is there, like, come on, pick something good. The reason that he went and recorded his first out single was because he was trying to give his mother a, pre a gift, you know? So that's another another cute little thing that he did for his mum, you know? I heard a uh, an expression of how, of, of their bond, of what their bond was, was sort of like. Someone said that, um, it was almost like you couldn't define where his mother ended and where he began. It was almost like they were just so meshed, entwined in their soul and their, in their, you know, like in their aura, in their, you know, personality that they were just so, that they were almost like one, you know, rather than two individual people. Um, and I think that's why it hit Elvis so hard when she eventually passed early um, because of the fact that he, that was such a big part of his his soul, his, his, you know, his heart. But also I feel like, I also feel like because he had already lost his twin, right, that's already losing a big part of your, of your, soul and your heart right your, your your being and then also to then lose the other the other person that makes up your being like your soulmate almost right to lose that person 
you know, like that that would have ripped a just his whole like half of his his soul away, you know. And like I totally understand why people say like he never cha- he changed after that and he was never really the same again and that he never really got over that. Um, and I think he even to the end he just I don't think he ever was really over that, you know, that loss because he just was so connected to her in, in every way. Um, and and also with his his brother, you know, and what could have been there, you know. When so Gladys did when Gladys passed she she it was August 14, 1930, um, 1958 sorry um and you know that was obviously while he was in the army and they they were trying to portray her in the movie especially that she was this alcoholic which i think is really unfair because they had said people had said like her family members and things like that had said like she actually was never a big drinker i mean the only time she really started drinking more was when Elvis got drafted and I, I mean I we, as a mother you can understand that I mean you're losing your child like you you'd be upset you'd want to you know you'd be wanting to numb those feelings and that was the way that she thought she could do it you know but she wasn't a massive drinker like uh, they apparently she never she was never that drunk to the point of like passing out or being that you know that gone (laughs) she would just drink to be merry or to be you know get a bit tipsy and that's pretty much it you know like um but in terms of her hepatitis i actually think i don't think it was because they said it was due to alcoholic poisoning or you know whatever intoxication in her liver but i actually don't think that's entirely true they knew it was hepatitis but they just uh, back then they weren't actually able to specify what kind of hepatitis it was right and there is many forms of it there's a b c d and e you've got b c d which are which are actually contracted their their blood their blood born and also through bodily fluids okay even if it was an autoimmune one they wouldn't they didn't have the medical technologies then to even treat that if they wanted to so anyway, I just think that um, I believe going back to the fact that her parents were cousins, I think because her like genetically, she may have already had that predisposition. Sometimes in, in that situation, in those situations, there can be disorders and diseases and illnesses that can come from the mixing of the bloodline. You know what I mean? So. And that's just the truth of the matter. I mean, when she was drinking more heavily, it triggered it, and maybe then there was no going back from that. And it's just created a problem. And on top of that, she was depressed and things like that. So it wasn't just that. I really think it was a culmination because one thing said acute hepatitis and another, like, of like cause of death said was heart attack. So... It could have been a mix of things like that, like a couple of things together like that. Um, you know, I just think that she was just so, so sad and lonely and heartbroken that it's just, it got to the point where she was trying to numb everything and it just got too much and that was it, you know. Um, but I think, I think in terms of her hepatitis, I don't think it was there from the alcohol i think it was there maybe from a little bit of something else you know like another factor in there um which it can't be really proven anyway but i just think that that's that's could be the case because i don't think it was from the alcohol poisoning but look i i just think that she really did she really was such an inspirational amazing strong resilient woman that really does need the the proper like proper tribute the proper spotlight on her you know because i feel like no one no one, she's always always unfortunately in the background because even while Elvis was in the spotlight it was him and vernon 
and she just didn't really want to be part of it. I don't think she was comfortable with it. She just didn't. She didn't want it, you know. And um, you know, she herself said she wished sometimes they could go back to being poor. And I think she just liked it, enjoyed that simple life, you know. And that's understandable when you don't know any different and then all of a sudden it's way too much, like overwhelming, you know, like lot to deal with. So anyway, but I'm going to wrap this video up for the moment. But we will be talking about Gladys again. I want to talk about a little bit more about Elvis and his hobbies and things like that next. Um, so please guys stay tuned. Let me know how, what you thought about the things I was talking about today topics I brought up and your thoughts on them um, yeah I'd love to hear what you guys think and I look forward to talking with you guys again soon so have a great day and keep it real TCB minders see you next time bye